After years of me trying to find one of these Game Boy players and it never happening, I decided to just go ahead and buy one. So I just recently picked up the Game Boy Player and the startup disc. The price of this accessory has gotten ridiculous over the years. The player itself isn't that bad. This alone is like 40 or $50. It's the startup disc that I guess a lot of people lost over the years. This disc alone goes for between $100 and $150. So yeah, I did have to pay close to $200 just to have this in my collection, but it's really cool. Let's check it out. So the first thing you need to do to install the Game Boy Player on your GameCube is basically just flip your GameCube upside down. Then you're going to want to remove this cover right here because the Game Boy Player will be plugging into this port right here. So let's plug it in like this. And I like how they added these two screws that go through the Game Boy Player and into the GameCube so that it stays secure and it won't shake off when you're in the middle of the game or if you're uh, taking your GameCube somewhere. And the installation is very easy. That's it. They made it very simple. So now we can turn our GameCube back over like this. And remember to keep this cover in a safe place because you know one day you're going to take your Game Boy Player off and you're going to lose this. So I actually decided to keep mine with all my GameCube games and accessories. So it'll go right here so I'll always know where it is. Cool thing about the Game Boy Player is it plays Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and regular Game Boy games as well as Game Boy accessories. So we're going to test those all out today. So first we're going to try a regular Game Boy game, Tennis which was one of my favorite games back in the day. Plug it into the bottom there. And let's put in our very expensive Game Boy Player startup disc that is required in order to play the Game Boy Player. And you'll see that now the Game Boy Player is loaded and it's playing tennis for Game Boy, just like a regular Game Boy would, but on the TV. It's actually the color version of the game. On the regular Game Boy, it would not look this nice. It would just be black and white, but this looks even better. Let's take a look at the settings of the Game Boy Player. So if you look down here, there's a timer. I'm not sure what that's for. I guess if you want to time something. You could change the games by pushing change game pack. That's if you want to put in a different game. Here's the different frames you can scroll through, which basically just changes the background of the game. There is full screen and normal screen mode for the Game Boy Player. And then you can also customize the controls however you'd like. The Z button is how you turn the options menu on and off. You have the option of using the D-pad like you would in the regular Game Boy, or you can use the analog stick if you're more accustomed to that. Um, I'm going to go with the D-pad because it's more like a traditional Game Boy. And then this is the A button like it would be on a Game Boy. And here I am just playing a little uh, tennis. So as I mentioned earlier, when you want to change games, you push the Z button and then you scroll over to change game pack. And then it asks you if you want to confirm, just say yes. And now it's safe to change your game pack. So let's go ahead and take our Game Boy game tennis out. And we're going to put in a Game Boy Color game, Mario Golf in the Game Boy Player, push it in firmly, and you'll see it just automatically loads up. Let's mess with the settings a little bit. Let's go ahead and change it to normal mode. And I forgot to mention there's a screen filter. I can't really see much of a difference, but you can choose between normal, soft, and sharp. Let's change it to sharp and then hit the Z button. And you'll see now that the screen is a little bit smaller, but the quality of the graphics should be a little bit better because it's more true to the uh, Game Boy Color size. Let's go ahead and try a GBA game. So I'm going to do that same thing where I change games and we'll take out the Game Boy Color game and put in Super Mario 3 for the Game Boy Advance. And I changed it to a wood grain background and it made it more of a full screen here so we can start playing the game. And it takes up pretty much the whole screen here because it's the GBA screen is more of a wide screen. So um, it takes a lot more space up, which is nice. Game Boy Player actually has an eject button, so how it works is you pull this towards you and look how the game just flies out like that. It goes pretty far. It could actually make a fun game within its own. Let's go ahead and pop the e-reader accessory into the Game Boy Player. And here's a startup screen as if I was playing my regular Game Boy. And this accessory lets you scan these cards to the e-reader and you can actually load games. This one's air hockey. So you scan it like that, then it'll tell you part of it's loaded. And you rotate this card 180 degrees and scan it again. And now you'll see that the game is loaded. And here I am playing air hockey through my e-reader, which is connected to my Game Boy Player on my GameCube. When you've had enough Game Boy for the day, all you do is simply push the power button to shut it down. So it seems a little nuts to spend close to $200 on accessory for your GameCube. But when you think about how much you're getting out of it, you get a Game Boy Player, which plays Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color games, thousands of games between those platforms. Plus the incredible GameCube library, it's probably a pretty good accessory to add to your collection if you don't already have it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.